After a decade virtually unchallenged, Mrs Thatcher is now trying to reverse opinion polls which put her Conservatives behind not only the Labour Party, but the Liberals too. This profile of Margaret Thatcher's leadership was compiled by BBC Newsnight's John Tuser. Margaret Thatcher's more than an image, a totem, a symbol. She intensifies politics. She acts as a catalyst. Her aim is to use her example to make the nation change its ways. She makes national drama out of great events. For Margaret Thatcher is an evangelist. Her mission, to lead the country forward by rediscovering what she sees as the old truths. The Old Testament prophets didn't go out into the highways saying, brothers, I want consensus. They said, this is my faith and my vision. This is what I passionately believe. And they preached it. We have a message. Go out, preach it, practice it, fight for it. And the day will be ours. Yeah. Ten years ago, Margaret Thatcher was the unexpected Tory leader, the unknown quantity, the outsider, and a woman as well. Let's give the filly a run, they said patronizingly. Her vision was unfashionable, simply because she talked of the country's need for one. Socialism must be destroyed. In its place, the family virtues, individual responsibility, deeds, not words. It was easy for the smart political world and her contemporaries to underestimate her. Thank you. But one of the most extraordinary things is the fact that Margaret Thatcher, as I knew her when we were young, is now Prime Minister. She was, when we knew each other at school and uh, later on at Oxford, a perfectly ordinary student. Hard-working, not a lot of imagination, not a lot of sense of humour either, and yet uh, determined to uh, get to the top as a politician. And I distinctly remember when we were all 21 sitting around our kitchen table, the end of a party, that she suddenly said, I now know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a politician. I'm going to be a member of parliament. And from then she went ahead to do it. Mrs. Thatcher soon proclaimed herself a radical reactionary, reacting against almost everything the conservative Heath government, of which she was a part, stood for. Whether he paid too much attention to the unions, pursued impossible incomes policies or displayed the unforgivable weakness of starting a contest with the miners and then losing it, these were the never-to-be-repeated years. She felt that there was a world of, uh, out there of sort of fudge and nudge and compromise and mutterings in men's clubs. I think there was a certain amount of feeling that, uh, that men were at the bottom of the trouble. And uh, it was time for a good new broom, no nonsense, and cutting through all this waffle. I think it was a reaction to the sort of bogus consensus that uh, many of us had thought had formed in this country in the 1970s, a sort of top people's uh, contract, as it were, between uh, the big union bosses and big business and the nationalised industries and the world of Whitehall. Yeah, the kind of attitude that uh, was represented by the old paternalism, saying we really must get together with these trade union chappies and uh, calm everything down, otherwise the, the, the tiger will get out of the cage. I think she uh, dismissed all that as complete nonsense. For Mrs Thatcher, 1975 was year zero in the Conservative Party. In ten years, she's produced a Conservative revolution. The national political debate has changed, the Cabinet has changed, and so has the party itself. On the surface, such traditional and timeless supporters of the Conservative Party have nothing to fear. On the face of it, Mrs Thatcher is the very leader they've long wanted. Her qualities, those they admire. I think we're very lucky to at last to find a politician with enough determination to uh, see a lot of troubled times through. Mrs Thatcher is not from the shires and has no time for the paternalism and patronage of the old landed classes. These people may own but they do not earn. 
As such, they have no place in her heart, and the party is no longer theirs as it used to be theirs. Mrs. Thatcher's own definition of her success sets her apart from those who inherit it. What I have and where I am, she said ten years ago, is the result of continuous effort and the courage to take the next step. Her instincts turn naturally to the little man, the upwardly mobile. From the beginning, Mrs. Thatcher saw the party couldn't survive solely on supporters like these. Yet she also believed that middle-class values were not the prerogative of the middle classes alone. What she has done is to widen the appeal of those values without losing the support of the people from whom they came in the first place. Oh, I think she's a great girl. I think she's, she's good for the country and she's tough and that's what we need. She's, she's going to get us put right and I've got every confidence in her. I think she's a super person, the right person for the job and doing a good job. a very simple one with distinct um, rights and wrongs things were black and white there was really very little room for any grey and therefore uh, maybe this has stayed with her this black and white approach to most things the old roberts family corner shop in grantham doubles up as restaurant and shrine to thatcherism the goods and trappings of a 1950s corner shop speak eloquently of a bygone age before inflation. They've come to symbolize, too, the values which the future leader transformed into a set of economic beliefs about thrift, self-help, self-improvement, above all, the need to earn before you spend. Mrs. Thatcher took these values with her to Number 10 Downing Street and turned them into an effective political philosophy. But she could do that because millions wanted a leader to proclaim what they had always believed themselves, but they were ideas that many in her party had stopped believing. 